welcome to We Create, the podcast that brings to light creative projects in our community. My name is Linda Salzer, and in today's episode, we'll be talking about the journey that starts with the first step. My special guest is my friend, Venus Jancic. She joined the ranks of the Adirondack 46ers when she climbed her last high peak in 2019. Spanning seven years, Venus completed the 46 high peak and received her number, 11888. Venus, what does it take to climb 46 high peaks, each one over 4,000 feet high? Well, for me, it was about being very dedicated and um, determined and a lot of planning. What do you mean by planning? Well, when I first started off, it was, I started off because a friend invited me. Mm-hmm. And I had always been very interested in, you know, being outside and stuff and climbing little mountains. And when she first, she took me on my first high peak and I became obsessed. And mm-hmm. I think it was because each mountain, as I did more and more, each one had its own different challenges to it. And so I, the first, the first couple of times I went with a friend and she, she's the one who basically helped me figure out how to use a map and, and plan out my hikes and things like that. And then afterwards, she couldn't hike anymore. I took a break for a couple of years. And then I decided I was going to do them for myself. So I started researching, and I read a lot of stuff online, and I picked up some books and talked to friends and family that had been climbing them. So you were talking. I was thinking about mm-hmm. um, my experience climbing the high peaks. I've done seven, mm-hmm. and it, they just seem – they're really, really – hard i mean they you really um it, it's a challenge to uh with endurance physically and also mm-hmm. mentally yeah did you find that to be true i did because the first couple of ones i did i really was not physically fit and i did i think i want to say five mountains in two years it took me with my friends and then i took a break from that and i took up running and did, you know, a lot more um, physical activity. And once I started to realize, hey, if I can run 26 miles, I can certainly hike 26 miles. Mm-hmm. So put put it in my head that that's what I was going to do. And I went back to hiking, and I found that um, all of the strength and endurance training that I had done prepared me for a lot of the other mites because I'm a short person. I'm only five foot two and I rely on a lot of upper body strength in parts of the mountains to get me up over some, some of the rocky areas and things like that. And, you know, to prepare for some of them when I know I'm getting ready for hiking in the fall, I'll, I'll just walk around my house doing like lunges all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. I mean, I'm sure the neighbors probably think I'm crazy. I'll, I'll put on my backpack and I'll, I'll load it up with weights and I'll walk up and down the stairs um, to get myself ready. So, you know. I think a lot of people who are short would might feel like they, they couldn't do something like um, the bouldering. And the, it's really um, some of those are straight up, like you're climbing up like Spider-Man. I encountered one of those. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the hardest one I found for that situation was I did the cliffside saddleback mm-hmm. and I did it by myself. I was, I, a lot of the ones I've been doing just in the recent, recent past here, um, I did solo. And so when I, I read up a lot on the saddleback and realized I was probably going to have some difficulty. So I went to um, an indoor rock climbing area mm-hmm. and did a lot of bouldering and things like that. And I, I, that really did help me. And I, I lightened my load on my pack. But that, that one was 
that one was probably my most mentally challenging one and physically challenging one. I got up to uh, the top of Gothics. I made it all the way up the top from the Johnsburg side, and mm-hmm. the last tenth of a mile, I couldn't bring myself to go up because it, it was, you know, it was a pretty steep climb. I don't know if you came, uh, you know, approached Gothics that way, but uh, I couldn't do it mentally, you know, I mm-hmm. and we turned back. Yep. When I did Gothics, I did it on the hottest day of the year, on a 4th of July weekend, <laughs> And I went over Pyramid Mountain, which is mm. not considered a 46er, but it is taller than most of them. Mm-hmm. It's not a 46er because it's less than a mile from Gothic, and it has mm-hmm. to be a mile away. So I did I did that mountain first, then I did Gothic, then I did Armstrong, and then I did Upper Wolf. And mm-hmm. then I abandoned Lower Wolf because it was just too hot, but... I wanted to go back and do the other trails to the mountains that I didn't do because I met a woman who t- who taught me about redlining. And so what you do is you grab your map, you outline all the trails that you did take, and then you go back and you redo the trails that you didn't do. So I And I want to do the cable side of Gothic. So one day yeah. I'll go back. So those cables uh, appear to not be in great shape, but they did support our weight. <laughs> did you have trouble finding water when you were doing that hike? Well, that year there was no water. There was, and the water that we would find, I wouldn't have trusted to drink. Oh. So I mean, I do carry the the Sawyer straw, and I carry tablets and and all that to treat water. But um, I've heard too many horror stories about hikers getting sick. And so, but the day that I did, so I I carry a lot of extra water on me, especially because I've come across hikers who have none, and I've shared. So that day, I just overdrank, and I did start to run out. That was, like, the only one time I, I ran out. But, Yeah. Oh, what do you think about those hikers that get up there and they're not prepared at all? I remember hiking up Marcy and I saw people hiking bare feet up there because their shoes fell apart by walking through water. To be honest, it frustrates me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I I thought I was being snobbish, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the word would be, but a lot of times I would be very frustrated. I, I ran into a a family who did not have enough food and water for their kids when they got to the food. So I gave them what I had because I knew it was a hot day and I knew what it was going to take to get them back down. And at the same time, I stopped and spoke to a ranger because I I ran into them on Phelps Mountain. And so I stopped and spoke to a ranger on Marcy Dam to let them know the situation because I was concerned for them. And of course. And I really wish that people would take the time to research and, and and know what they're getting into before they just decide to pull over and hop on trail. It's a real problem. And yeah. I can't believe how uh, generous you were, you know. But putting things into a pack, you, you have to be very judicious about it. You just mm-hmm. you don't bring a lot of extra things because it weighs mm-hmm. a lot, and water weighs mm-hmm. a lot. So. Mm-hmm. To give away your food and water, that was very generous. That could have put you into a situation where you could have gotten hurt. Yeah, well, I knew I had my my straw, and I I carry, like, my energy gels Mm -hmm. and things like that. So, But, I mean, I couldn't not, you know, look at a child and say, oh, hey, I got some grapes in my bag. Not give (laughs) them. I I just couldn't do that. And I'm like, if I had heard that that family had to be taken, you know, rescued out, I would have felt worse. You know, yeah. I know yeah. I knew what my limitations are. A child doesn't, and, and I mm-hmm. and I we just felt horrible. And and it is frustrating. And, and I hear that it's getting worse and worse. And so that was that was my push to finish the mountains as quickly as I did because I wanted to do it while they were still clean. I guess I I as that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that I'm kind mm-hmm. of uh, hesitating about. Uh, I don't feel the drive to do the high peaks like I did because so many people are there now. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a real problem. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, hopefully the, with the development and planning of, uh, you know, making sure that people can't park, you know, every place that they used to, uh, mm-hmm. hopefully it's limiting the number that, that do come down. Yep, yep. So what was your first high peak? Um, my first high peak was the, you know, the one everybody does, Cascade and Porter. Mm-hmm, and, of course. Um, yep. <laughs> and and your, your last? What was your last hike? The last one was Allen, and I didn't plan on that being my last one because I, a lot of people ask me, why would you want to end on Allen? And mm-hmm. it was just one of those situations where I'd heard so many horror stories about it that I kept putting it off and putting it off, and, <laughs> and then it finally came down to the last one. I was like, okay, well, I guess Allen's going to be my my last mountain. And and I'm glad that I did that because it, I almost feel like it was fate that I did it because about halfway up the mountain, at the actual trailhead, because you have to hike in eight miles to get to the trailhead for Allen before, mm-hmm. you know, then you hike up the mountain. I ran into a pair of hikers, and they were chitting, chatting me up, and I was signing in and closed up the book, and I said, you know, I want to say goodbye, and they're like, "Oh, you're hiking alone," and I and I was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I solo hike all the time," and they're like, "Oh well, you know, you really shouldn't do that," and I'm like, "Well, you know, I said, this is my last one," so <laughs> and <laughs> they're like, "Your last one? You mean you're finishing?" And I'm like, "Yep," and she's like, "Well, we're not gonna let you hike alone." These two um, older ladies decided to take me under their wing, I guess, and mm-hmm. hike, you know, hike me up the mountain, and it turned out perfect because the woman was in I don't know multi-time 46er and she's part of the the club and the group and all that and so and she just talked my ear off the whole way and it was really I'm mostly a solar hiker because I like the silence Uh but it was a it was a comfortable chat so and when I when I got to the top they let me walk up to the sign, I turned around and she's like, okay. And she started singing the special secret 46er song <laughs> that, they, that they do at their dinner. And, uh-huh. and she sang it to me. And it was just, I wouldn't have, I couldn't have planned a better way to end my, my journey. Oh, that um, sounds really great. I didn't so. even know there was a secret song. I guess I didn't accomplish enough mountains to know that there was <laughs> one. <laughs> have you done any hikes in the winter? No, I am a baby about the cold, and I find that, like, I'm nervous thinking about being out there because I know how high the snow is up there, mm-hmm. and, and I know that you've done a couple in the snow, in the winter. I, I didn't make it up to the top, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I found that it was easier to hike in the winter because the snow mm-hmm. covered all of those rocks, so I didn't have the up and down. You yeah. know, it's all flat, but just going right up the mountain. Yep. <laughs> I'm a very slow hiker, so uh, I tried to go once with a group, and I just found I couldn't keep up with them because uh, my pack is always too heavy. I, You know, mm-hmm. I take that list that they give you, the emergency list, mm-hmm. with every possible thing that you might need, and I carry it all, and my pack is probably twice as heavy as it should be. Mm-hmm. Well, it's better than not being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever gotten into a situation where you uh, you didn't have something you absolutely needed? No, not for me. <laughs> I'm super. That's good. Very, I'm super very probably over prepared really? for a lot of things. But the one time that I probably I would probably say that if it, it would would have been on Six Mountain. I didn't have the proper clothing, come to think of it, actually. Because oh. when I started in the morning, it was one of those beautiful days and went by the weather that was supposed to be beautiful. But, you know, mountains make their own weather. That's right. And so I went to do the whole Dix Range, and I was with a, I did have a hiking partner. And she was much slower that day. And oh. so we got behind and it started by the time we did we got to South Dix and we jumped over and we did Grace and we got back to because you do Malcolm, South Great, South Dix, 
then you jump over and you do grace, and then you have to go, go hike back up over South Dix to get to the next mountain, Hoff. Uh-huh. Then you do Dix. So by the time we got to South Dix, it was raining, and I realized I did not pack my rain gear. And thinking, oh, it's beautiful, I'm not going to need it, lighten right. my pack a little bit, yeah, because we were doing five high peaks that day. And I got soaked, and I was cold, and I knew that I was probably, if we didn't pick up the pace, I was going to be in trouble. Because you can get hypothermia even when it's, it doesn't have to be 32 degrees to get hypothermia. It just seemed like the colder and wetter we got, the slower we were going, and I took a misstep, and I just, I got excited because I realized we, we hit the slide on Dick's. Uh-huh. And we knew that we were going to be getting out, and I hit the slide, and I literally hit it, and my feet came out from underneath me. <laughs> and oh. I fell, and I slid down the slide on South Dix. And, what? <laughs> and I hurt my back. And I sat there oh. for a moment, and I was like, I can't get up. And then I and I asked my friend to help me. I asked her to, I was like, look, I I couldn't even, like, concentrate on the trail it was getting dark and I'm like you've got to get us out of here and she started to panic so I like had to pull myself together and get us both out (laughs) but sounds very serious yeah I at one point I actually said I think I'm just gonna find a tree and sit down and and wait (laughs) if I have to sit here through the night I think I'm gonna wait and I think that was my lowest point in a hike that I ever got that I didn't think I was going to be able to get myself out. I knew I had my friend that was relying on me, so I had to mm-hmm. get us both out. So, you know. Those are the kind of moments uh, that are really hard psychologically because you, you mm-hmm. could easily, you know, fall into despair and, and mm-hmm. you know, and, and not complete your goal of getting out. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, I think those challenges make you stronger because um, you – you have that will to want to survive so no oh, yeah yep and i and i've always said to myself i don't want to be that person that needs to be rescued oh yeah every time every time i've gone into a hike don't let me be that person in the list of people that got rescued this weekend and not having to be able to rely on cell service and, and all that like So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to learn how to use a GPS. I'm going to learn how to use my map. And and if I get into a situation, I've got to get myself out of it. I want to be prepared. Yeah. Uh, Can you use the map and compass? Do you have those skills? Thankfully, before I had fog brain, which you get from Lyme disease, um, I did have a situation where we couldn't quite make out the trail, so I got out the map and I got out my compass, and um, we did have the GPS, but I'm like, I'm not going to just completely rely on the GPS. So, yeah, yeah, I could, I can figure out a map with a compass. Mm-hmm. With the fog brain, that is one of the reasons why I will no longer hike solo now. Yeah. So I did find that I didn't know that I had it, the last hiking season when I was completing my, my high peaks. Uh-huh. And um, now that I know what it is, I'm glad that I made it out of the woods on my own. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I can laugh about it now, but there was, yeah. some, you know, I look back at it now. I'm like, well, geez, I probably wasn't smart hiking solo. So I, I sit there and I, I try to think of it as a, you know, for myself, it was a bad, a badge of honor to say that I did most of them solo because I really feel like being a short female that looks like a child, everybody looks at me and thinks, oh, she can't do these things. That's you right. Know? So yeah. I was like, and the worst thing to tell me is, no, you can't do it. So <laughs> I just went and did it. And if my thing that I can, you know, say to anybody for word of advice, don't hike solo. I would rather see people hike mm-hmm. with a partner or a group. Hard to find the right partner uh, you know i've wanted to go back up and mm-hmm. and i you know i'm a diabetic and that's uh that's a pretty serious situation i i always worry mm-hmm. about having enough food and and mm-hmm. i don't know I, I i should probably not let that stop me though because obviously if you're prepared you mitigate the risk 
Mm-hmm. That's what I think anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So after all those hikes, uh, which one was your favorite? I actually ha- have two favorites. View-wise, it was Rocky Ridge. And I did that from oh, yeah. the new Russia side. I just found it to be beautiful because it has so many faults. Mm-hmm. But you have a view through the whole thing. And it is a long hike, but it's worth it. And I loved the um, beach forest. And it was, that was a beautiful hike. And the view for, of the Champlain and, the, and, and, and you get a, a view of all the high peaks from that one. And my second favorite, um, was Marshall, which is an unmaintained um, trail. Um, I have to laugh because I tried to do Marshall with a friend, and and we couldn't find the trail. We just uh, we weren't in the right place. <laughs> well, I um came in from um oh my gosh, it was a long hike. But the side that I came in from, it, it was tricky finding finding the trail, and that one is hard because. You have to cross the stream many times and the trail from one side to the other, from one side to the other. And if Mm -hmm. you can't find the stack of rocks to find, you have to look for the scratches in the rocks, you know, where people have had their poles or not. You know, it it is, you do have to pay attention on that hike, but Mm -hmm. the mom, it was just like a a fairyland for me. It was like, it was waterfalls and the glistening moss and, it was it was so quiet, and I I just I loved that hike. Um, and it's one of those that you only really do. A lot of people only really do because you want to be a forty sixer because it's yeah. out there. So, yeah. is there a downed airplane on that mountain? I vaguely there remember. There is, and it's on the other side that I didn't come up from. Oh, so, okay. So on one of those trails that hopefully one day I'll I'll go back and and uh-huh. do one of these. Yep. Oh, there's so many trails. And I and and I did love coming off from Gray Mountain mm-hmm. and coming up to the little stream and standing over and knowing that that's the start of the Hudson. That oh. that that too was like. So I put my little finger in there and I was like, well, somewhere in down in the Hudson, I made a ripple. You know, it was like that is oh. really cool to think about. So just from the right there is the start of the Hudson. Yep. Well, wow, that's great. We're getting towards the end of uh, the podcast here, but I do want to ask you, uh, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to get started in hiking in the high peaks? I would say try to check out some of the lower mountains first mm-hmm. um, on the 29er list. And there's tons and tons of lower mountains to check out first. Mm-hmm. And also just read up, study, and research the mountain that you're actually going to first. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the most important thing. Like I said, hike with a buddy. Try to find a good hiking partner. And bring a map. <laughs> Definitely bring a map. Um, oh. There are certain things that you should have in your backpack, and I always tell everybody – to bring a map, a, a compass, a form of fire, mm-hmm. and um, first aid, and a flashlight. Uh, a flashlight. That's right. <laughs> flashlight. <laughs> yep. And some food. Food, right? Yes, food. And water. Food and water. Yes. Enough for two, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> well, I, you just never know how much food you're going to need. And you might be out there longer than you think, so it's always good to have something. I always try to make sure that I had enough for my hike, and then if I had to stay overnight. That's yes, right. Yep. So in that case, you you do want to have some sort of a warm coat or something, you know, thermal underwear. I don't know. Depends on the time of the year it is. Yeah, definitely. There there is a list. If you if you go and you can check it out at the Adirondack Mountain Club or the um, LBJ or you know um, the lodge, always like the Adirondack Lodge is a good place to go in 
to the store and just talk to the people that are behind the counter before you go off on your hike. And That's that way true. they also know that if there's people that aren't prepared, they, they're they watching out for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're excellent. They, they've given us some great advice about the conditions of the trails and mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. to expect. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I love those guys. <laughs> and, and I also want to ask everybody to stay off the alpine because it's very mm-hmm. important to walk all over the alpine. And, and can you just uh, uh, tell everybody what you're what you mean by alpine? The alpine is the foliage and the growth that's on top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. And I've seen a lot of people like they'll post a picture. I made it to the top of haystack, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're standing right in the middle of the alpine. And it's it's very essential to to save that because that's what's protecting the top of the mountain from the the rain and the wind and everything like that. And if that and if that goes away, then the the mountain starts to erode. And it takes a long time to grow. Wow. Oh definitely, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's excellent advice. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes uh you know, some of the stores at the top and uh mm-hmm. they can remind people but I don't think they're on every mountain. No, they're on the most populated mountains, mm-hmm. the ones that are in trouble right now because people are just trashing the mountains, and it's really sad. Hopefully one day the amount of population on the mountains will start to slow down a little bit so they can start to heal themselves. Oh, well, where do you prefer to hike now that you've finished the Adirondack High Peaks? I've been doing, working off a list called the 29ers, and it's, it's not in the like challenge but it's a great way to find local mountains that most people wouldn't know about and I have my go-tos that I love to revisit and up and around Indian Lake I love Snowy Mountain and I love Black Mountain over on by Lake George mm-hmm. um there's there's a lot of mountains that I I will reclimb just because they 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 do change, and with the seasons and they're fun and easy. Well, that sounds like great advice for everybody that lives close enough to get there. Mhm. Yep. Well, that's great. So uh, Venus, I'm I'm so uh, grateful for you coming on to We Create and talking about your experience and climbing the 46 high peaks. Uh, it's just awesome. I, uh, I've learned so much about what you have to offer, and uh, mm-hmm. I think everybody else has too. So thank you so much. Okay. Well, Linda, one day you and I will be back out on the trail together. I am looking forward to that. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.